Hi guys, my name is Beverly. Today is December 5th, 2017. I had a, a short dream yesterday that I wanted to share. And um, so in this dream, I was watching a news show and the show was like a news program put on by uh, the Catholic network. Um, so what they were showing was a graphic, a diagram of a graphic, um, like a war graphic. And they were talking uh, anti-Russian rhetoric as if Russia were the aggressor and the good forces like the U.S., the Allied powers, were they were set up as though they were justified in taking aggressive action against Russia. So it was war, but it was not yet on American soil. This was America and other countries, I think, too, acting against Russia. And this was the Catholics saying that they were slanting the news that they were reporting and uh, reporting it as though it were truth, that if this was Russia's fault and that Russia needed to be... Um, like, I don't know, like kind of reprimanded by the world or the world needed to take action against Russia. So, um, now what I felt in the dream was like, I didn't trust it because I felt like Russia was just being set up. I was extremely skeptical about it. I wasn't buying it at all. And the Catholics were just, they were just saying that, but, but they were saying it as though they were credible and they were like, oh, Russia, this is terrible. You know, Russia is um, doing this and, and we really need to come against them. They were doing as though they were sincere and stuff, but they weren't, they weren't sincere. Russia was being set up to look like the bad guy. But uh, the feeling I had was like Russia was just, they were either provoked or they were just defending themselves. They were doing what they had a right to do as a nation. And they were just being set up to, to kind of be the scapegoats for the war that, that, um, that the Catholic Church and the New World Order they want to provoke this war. They need this war. It's going to further the purposes of the New World Order. And for wicked men, war is an opportunity to get rich. War is an opportunity to gain power. And um, so... Let's see. Yeah, the, the Russians were being painted as the bad guys. And this was all in a very stereotypical, cliche way. And it was really insulting to the intelligence of, of anyone that is awake. Like, And they were using... The, the power that they possessed having an avenue of media to gather support for the war to make everybody get into this patriotic feeling you know that they're defending this just war so um, I was with two people when this started 
And these two people, one was a man and one was a woman. And they both, this took place on a Monday. And I really did have this dream on a Monday. So this took place on a Monday. And these people were, um, they had been out the weekend before celebrating their birthday. Just getting drunk and being wild, turning up for their birthday. And um, the guy, one was a guy, one was a girl. The guy, he had cake all over his face. And his birthday was really the next day which would have been today. And the woman's birthday, I think her birthday was like tomorrow in the dream. It would have been tomorrow. Um, so that was pretty much it. I just mentioned that part about the birthdays because I just want to caution people about your birthday. Um, you know, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with celebrating a person's birthday, but the devil has people feeling like, you know, this is like a free day. Go get wild, like you, you're under an obligation to like be sloppy drunk on your birthday and, and you just get a pass. You know, go so-and-so, it's your birthday. So be holy on your birthday and every day. But like I said, I just, oh, and also when the Catholics were um, doing that slanted reporting about the war, they also showed a mass like their, their Catholic church service. So they were really just pouring it on thick as far as um, slanted reporting and, and um, exerting undue emotional influence over people. It was just wicked. It was just wicked. And also the guy in the dream, he had a boat. He he had a boat. He was kind of rich. And um, it made me just ask the question, just throw that out there. Like, do these wealthy people, elite people who are, you know, in on what's going to happen, do they think that, you know, when they unleash war, upon the continents and within the nations do they think that they're going to like be able to hide out on boats or in the ocean or something like that it just made me wonder and the woman she had a handful of medication she had about five different pills all different sizes one great big pill i remember she had and um i don't really know what that has to do with anything but I also heard uh, before I woke up or maybe right after I woke up family planning and when I heard family planning it was a euphemism for birth control and including abortion so I don't know. Oh, so I don't want to belabor that or make a real long video. I just wanted to share that. And there is going to be a war. We all know that. And it's going to be contrived and manipulated and war is just going to be all a part of the plan it's all a part of the, the plan to you know terrorize people 
and to herd us into the new world order and not just to terrorize people but to just to manipulate everybody just to manipulate everybody like I was listening to some people today they are watching the news and they're just totally sucked in they're totally sucked into this story that the media is telling they're it's like watching a soap opera. It's so predictable. You know, you see how phony it is. But they're talking about it as though this stuff were real. It's, it's frustrating for me. It's hard for me to listen to people talk like that. It's just hard for me to watch them be so deceived. And I just want to encourage everybody, seek to be filled with the Holy Ghost because you're going to need it. You're going to need it. And the devil does not want you filled with the Holy Spirit. The devil, one thing he consistently does is speak against the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Even using well-meaning people to speak against it. People who've just been taught against it. Other people who just don't know. And it can be, I'm going to be honest with you, it can be extremely frustrating when you're desiring to be filled with the Holy Spirit and you're seeking the Holy Spirit and you're asking God to fill you with the Holy Spirit because um God does it his way and in his timing. And a lot of people can lose patience waiting on the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to tell you 100% of the time, the reason why people are not filled with the Holy Spirit is not God. And it's not because he's not willing to. It's something in you that's not yielded. It's something in you that's not yielded to the Holy Spirit. And a lot of times, there are some times where people just don't want to let go. They, they want to maintain control. They want to, um, yeah, they, they don't want to, you know, lose their cool. Or they don't want to cry. Or, you know, they don't want to whatever. So they hold back or I, I don't know. So there's a, a scripture that I wanted to share. And then I'm going to end this video. It is Psalm 20, 24 verses 7 through 10. It says, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. So sometimes being filled with the Holy Spirit is a matter of letting go of yourself. Of yielding yourself to the Holy Spirit. It's just, you know, Lord, I'm yours. Do whatever you want to do. Come and just fill me up. And wherever you take me, wherever it leads me, I yield to it. But some people, you know, they want to keep their cool. You know, they want to appear very in control. 
but but the Bible says, uh, remember David danced out of his clothes. He danced all the way out of his clothes to the point where his wife mocked him. So if you don't, some people, they, you know, they just don't want to, they want to remain very dignified in, instead of giving God the glory. And also there's one other thing I want to say. There is um, some, sometimes you can feel the presence of God and the presence of God can come over you. And a lot of people can mistake that for being baptized in the Holy Spirit. But God is not going to leave you guessing whether you are baptized in the Holy Spirit. You will know because the Holy Spirit will speak out of you. He will speak out of your mouth. You will speak in tongues. And until you speak in tongues, don't stop seeking the Lord. Thank God for a touch. Thank God you something might, you know, make you fall to your knees. Something might make you weep. Uh, you know, you might be overcome with joy. You may uh, dance. You may just rejoice in praises. And you know that you felt the presence of the Lord. And that, um, that can happen. But that is not the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Thank God for that. But don't stop seeking until you are filled and you will know you're filled because you will speak in tongues. And don't stop until you do. The reason why I read that scripture, you know, lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Yield yourself. Open up the gate. Let him in. Sometimes that's that's what's missing. People don't want to let go. Let go of sin, idols, anything and everything. So that's what I have to say for now. And, and God bless you guys.